Welcome to Jason Live. My name is Haley Nelson, and we are back with our STEM career series, where we learn about careers in science, technology, engineering, and math from role models in those fields. And today's role model is Travis McGuire. And Travis, he is a robot engineer with TransOcean, where he uses physics, math, and material science to make sure that everybody is safe, can go home at the end of the day, and much, much more. And we're going to connect with Travis in just a moment. But for now, I want to remind you that today's event is live and interactive. So if you have questions, go ahead and send them in. There is a, a place to do that right below this video. And we'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible. So keep an ear out for your name and your question. And, and now's the time. Hi, Travis. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you for so much for, for coming in here. We have lots of questions already coming in. People want to know about what it is to be a robot engineer. We've got Jonathan and Brian. They would like to know, what does a robot engineer? Does that mean you work with robots? And how Brian wants to know, how does your job relate to robotics? Okay. So um, I didn't start, I'll start off with saying, I didn't start out being a robotics engineer. I have kind of uh, come into it, I think, as a lot of people do with uh with you know go, starting in school and, and then you you kind of work your way to it so i i've been introduced to it rather recently um mm -hmm. and i've learned a lot about what robotics really is so uh you know we obviously use a lot of robotics in what i started school doing which was welding is almost every car factory out there uses robots to weld but uh but what I'm currently working on is very different from that. So uh, robotics can be a lot of things, but in general, robotics is about, about using machines that can learn uh, by the way you program them to, uh, to do really cool things. Okay, so just to make sure we're all on the same page here about what a robot is, I think a sure. lot of people are, are picturing BB-8 BB or k 2 That's right, yeah. Uh, what 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 makes the difference between a robot that you might imagine from a movie yeah. to these robots? Sure. So uh, the robots we see in movies and um, and maybe in 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 uh, you know something that maybe NASA built or or Honda has built. Like Honda has a really cool robot that really exactly. So I think most people think about humanoid robots, which are like the very um, the very cutting edge, like the very extreme of, of robots. Most other robots are really uh, arms. So they, they help you move things, right? Because robots can be really strong. Um, and so they help you move things from one place to another, but they don't really learn. So learning robots, I think, is what people think of. But learning robots are the exception more than the rule because they're very complex. And we have a question from Laura and Stephanie. Say, what training was required to become a robot engineer? Um, basically, I would say just, you know, it's a lot of just straight engineering. Engineering, math, science, physics, uh, computer programming, all of those things combine into robotics, right? That's why, that's why there's no degree really called robotics engineer is because robotics is about Com combining lots of skills to uh, to to make a robot. Well, in a way, that's pretty cool because it seems like a lot of it you learn at your job. Right. Yep. Aaron at Hopewell would like to know what are some of the tools that you use when when making a robot. Oh uh, well, I would say the very first thing you're doing is so you kind of can think of it in in two ways, right? So there's like the computer programming side. Mm -hmm. which is not very different from from anything you would do in a in a computer to making you know even video games right the a robot is really uh, taking a video game and making it do something so you have the computer side and then you have hardware which is a lot of like mechanics and hydraulic motors or or electric motors to be able to do things that uh, that are new and novel and innovative. So it's really two, two sets, right? So you've got your, your physical side and then you've got your, your kind of computer programming side. We have a follow-up 
wondering what would you consider to be the line between what a robot is and what a machine is? Um, I think so you kind of spoke to it before, really. Yeah, I think the, the difference being um, a robot is, is something that starts to learn. So, um, for example, the, uh, the chess robot, the Watson, the IBM Watson, right? That's really kind of a, the beginnings of a robot, especially from, uh, from the computer algorithm side, right? That's a really what a robot is. And so I think that's the difference between a machine that just says, do this over and over again, and something that, set, that can start making decisions. Okay, well, let's get into your machines, your robots. CC wants to know, how do you program robots for safety? Why is that important? And I just wanna know, what are the robots that you're working with? What do they do? Sure. So, um, you know, like the company I work for is called Transocean. And we, uh, we drill in, in, uh, for oil. For, for maybe a, you know an Exxon or a Shell or BP, right? So we, we bring a rig, like what's behind me there, out mm -hmm. to a location and, and we start to look, to look to tap an oil well, an oil reserve. Um, to do that requires a lot of heavy machinery and, and being able to do things. So what we're working to is to make the machinery we have a bit smarter. And so to do that, we use some techniques that were developed for robots and we try to make them a little bit smarter. So if we can bring up the one photo I have, uh, you know, have available for us with, uh, with a person out on, the, out on a rig floor, we can, we can show, so we have here a person out on a rig floor with a big piece of machinery and we're, using uh, robotic techniques to be able to make that machine smarter about knowing where a person is. So machinery by itself doesn't really care where a person is and it can trap people and hurt them and, and all kinds of really dangerous things. Um, and so what we're trying to do is take pieces of robots and we apply them to machinery that is not a robot and we get we get like a nice combination of being able to, to do things that regular machinery couldn't do. And now we have some smart pieces to it to, to be safer around people. Okay, I'm kind of imagining that the style of robot, I'm just gonna take this back to movies because I think it's something we sure. can all visualize. So Tony Stark, he's Iron Man, and he has basically a robotic arm that can perform many functions where he is. and it really makes me think about it because the color scheme in the photo that you just showed is exactly Iron Man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, can you also tell us um, what those areas around there are that, cause they were, someone was asking about, about safety and sure. um, how that relates to the safety on the floor. So yeah, the, what the, the main project I'm working on is about keeping people safe from, from that machinery that you saw there. So we have devised a way where, the the machinery by adding these robot pieces to it now can tell how far away a person is and you can see that in the the two colors we had there so we have that yellow color uh, a bit further away from the piece of machinery and that's to to be able to start telling people hey you know you really need to move there's a machinery piece of machinery coming and you need to, to move out of the way. And then if they, if they aren't able to move or they walk into it, when they hit that red boundary, then we start stopping that equipment. And, right, and that's another piece of a robot, like uh, being able to stop it on, a, on command. Okay, so that's your current project is yeah. now not just the, the building of the robots, not just the functioning of the robots, but how the robots are functioning around people. That's right. Okay, amazing. Um, Miss Picars's eighth grade class wants to know, how have you seen technology change throughout the years? Ooh, uh, well, technology's, you know, it's, uh, 
I am I am no technologist, so you know uh, uh, the speed at which technology out there is is accelerating is just unfathomable. You know, um, you know, even when I was in school, what was available in elect in the field of electronics is is ancient history compared to compared to now. Um, you know, the project I'm working on really uses a lot of technology that was built for driverless cars. And obviously every year we get closer and closer to having full autonomous driverless, driverless cars. And it's just a matter of when that's going to happen, not, not if. Um, and every year it gets better and better. And we figure out new ways of making those cars really robots. I love the way that having new innovation and a new piece of technology doesn't just benefit one area. It's obviously being applied to everything across the board. Once it's out there, it belongs to everyone and improves what everyone can sure. do and, and how they do it. And that's just amazing. That's right. Oh, so, I have a, I have a, oh sorry. Go one ahead. Of, one of my favorite uh, thoughts on this was, uh, you know, uh, if you look at like some old photos of like Fred Flintstone or, or George Jetson and and uh, others, um, you know, you'll find like these old pictures of them talking on on a phone or talking on their wristwatch, right? And and obviously now we have uh, we have iPhones and and all those kinds of cool things that that allow all of that stuff to happen. So you know, it it happens at a quick pace. The faster it goes, the faster it goes. I remember seeing in, in Back to the Future 3. That's right, yeah. They were FaceTiming before that was a thing. It's like, oh, wouldn't that be amazing? That's and right. Here we are, just a click away. Um, we have a question that's come in from uh, Gianluca, and has and it is, uh, oh, I love this. Have you ever fixed a haywire robot? A haywire robot? Um, yeah, we try not to let robots go haywire, right? Because they're they're so they are so <laughs> strong. So yeah, you don't want to fix you don't want to be fixing a, a haywire robot like cartoons show. Good, uh, good. It's one that starts shooting food all over the place is not a robot you want to be around. No, that's 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 very very true. Um, wonder Brian wonders how do you see your robots improving in the future? Improving. Um. I think they just improve by being smarter about what they can do and how much knowledge that they can acquire about the environment that's going on around them and, and helping people do a, a job safer. Okay, so I'm trying to wrap my head around the, the robots and machines. You have some that are on this rig and you have some that are like on, a, on another vessel that are coming in that maybe do different things. Um, if you're actually there physically in person, what are you gonna be seeing around you? Um, are our machines moving? Are they going from one side to the other? Are they coming from above? Can you just kind of describe what it's like in that environment? Sure. Um, so yeah, the, the, the drilling uh, phase of drilling a, a, you know, drilling a well for, for oil and gas is really about, uh, uses really a, a few pieces of machinery and they kind of travel, you know, left or right or up and down. And, and so uh, at the same time, there may be people out working around those pieces of equipment. And, and that equipment's really heavy, like weighs several tons. So it's like a car out there. And you've got people working around a moving car. And, and so obviously there's a lot of danger there. And so we're working on how to make that safer for people. Okay. We have another question from eighth graders wondering, did you always want to work with robots? What inspired you to work in robotics? Um, did I always want to work with robots? Probably not. Um, there was a point where I kind of got away from, from working specifically like with the welding robots, uh, because they're, they're, uh, they're not, I would say they're, they're a different, uh, a different type of robot from what I'm currently working on. So, um, so no, at one point I kind of went away from those and now back at it, which I think is really about, I got into it because we're, we're, the project is about 
is about uh, you know trying to keep people safe from from those things, not about uh, how to put a car together, or how to put a tractor together, or or, a, or a, an airplane together. Which we, all those things use use these uh, kind of welding robots and and other manipulating arms to do things. So, the the robots that you've worked with in the past. Some people might be thinking about uh, so those those the kinds that are welding robots are what you think of on an assembly line in a big warehouse. Right. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, so um, I looked up a little bit about um, you know what what it means to be a welding engineer, and you know you think of somebody who has a welding helmet on and and their torch, but it's a lot more than that. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about that? Sure. So. Um you know, most of the big products that we have today and even a lot of small products are welded together in some some manner. Um, from uh, a lot of work is kind of like at the two extremes. So like a pacemaker for a heart or heart valves, all of those things get welded together in some manner. And so that's one extreme, like very tiny, uh, almost to to not quite microscopic type of things, but but uh, very tiny welds that have to be made to put certain things together to really big stuff. So welding engineering is about is about how to join materials together uh, to to help facilitate whatever whatever need that they need to to do in the future. That it's it's so much it's so much more vast than I thought because I could only picture the big stuff so yeah. that you work on really tiny things small welds for even medical devices that's amazing yeah. um, and yeah. oh, what was the other other thing I was thinking about while you're saying that I was just kind of blown away um, oh that just the material science that's involved because you're joining things that may not want to join that's right and and you've also you've also just uh, got a huge number of other options that you could apply this to. We have somebody asking right now, what other types of jobs can you do as a robot engineer? What other types of jobs can you do? I think uh, lots of different jobs. Uh, robots are being used from, from construction to even banking in terms of not like a robot like we see in a movie, right? So we're not going to have a, a robot that travels around and and greets you maybe a, in a bank, although that could happen. But um, but certain pieces of the robot technology, vision technology, are being used by banks and other places. So I think robots in general have applicable features in lots of different places. It's all about what is a robot and how do you define it. So. I think, and even cars, right? Driverless cars are robots. Absolutely. We have wonder, people wondering what your daily life is like. What does your, your work schedule look like? Work schedule? So I have, uh, I have two, two small children. I have a kindergartner and at home and a two-year-old. So we are up early in the mornings and get everybody off to school and, uh, and then usually start work at about the same time as everybody's starting school. So, uh, and then work till till kids are done with school. And, and then in between different meetings and different things going on, reading reports and trying to d distinguish how we how we keep moving the project forward. Wow, has, has uh, life changed since you've, since you've had kids as far as how you're working and like choices that you made as far as the jobs go? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you have when you have kids, you have obviously a lot of uh, a lot more things going on, right? Baseball games sure. and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, all of that ends up affecting what we end up doing. Sure. Okay, so it seems like it's a uh, it's a, a job that you could do more or less nine to yep. five. That's and right. Still come home. Cool. Um, do you think robots will replace most jobs in the future? Um, no. Yes. Um, Would you care to elaborate? We may, we may have different jobs. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think we'll. I don't think robots will replace jobs. They may replace certain things we do, but they'll. But people will still be needed for other things. I don't think we're going to have a society where everybody just relies on a robot. I agree with you. Definitely, we're always going to be needed because we have right. to build the robots. That's right. Yep. Right. Maybe they could build themselves. Ah, no, just kidding. Um, is your job more research or more implementation of your studies? Um, right now, it's a combination of both. Because uh, I've been with the project from before we kind of knew what we were doing. So we've we've done a, little, a lot of research and and looking into what what all is available to to use and uh, and how do we start implementing it into what Transocean does. Yeah, that's pretty cool because you you must be constantly learning about what new technology is out there so that you can sure. figure out if it's going to help what you do. And do you do you um, physically implement these things or you do you take these ideas to uh, another group within your company? How does that work? Um, yeah, so we uh, we do work with we work with a lot for this project with two companies. Um, one of them is here in Houston, and they're real. They're real robotics guys. Like they, they really love robots, and they they build they build some really cool stuff. Um, and uh, so we work with them, and uh, and then we work with another company from uh, from England. So, really, kind of you're you're seeing it really big picture. And right. then for like the nuts and bolts, you take those ideas that you have to make things better and better, and you take that to a team who's an expert in that. Right. Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Mrs. Owens wants to know, what college degrees do you have? Are there other degree types that are geared toward your field or practice? Yeah. Um, so I have a welding engineering degree, a bachelor's degree, and I have an MBA. So a master's of master of business administration. So um, so those welding is probably the least the least uh, likely person to get into the robotics I'm doing, but the most likely to be involved with with welding robots. Um, the other degrees you would see are electrical engineering or electricians, um, electronics technicians so you know a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people who are work on airplanes use a lot of robotics in airplanes even today so you know uh, even regular commercial aircraft have features in them that are robotic like and so there's lots of fields out there that that have more and more interaction with with robots or robotic features. So uh, certainly mechanical engineering people and aerospace and lots of different engineering degrees give you the ability to work with, uh, work with robotics as do a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, non, non-college uh, based degrees in, in, in electronics or, or, or mechanics as well. Absolutely. Um, Katie wonders what part of your what part of your time in college prepared you the most for this job? Um, time in college. Uh, my time in college, I guess, really, it's just about, you know, learning what you what you needed to learn for for basic engineering stuff. You know, it's it's uh, uh, all about, you know, building things or 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 uh, how things work with each other. Yeah, it seems like it seems like you have a you learned a lot of foundational stuff, and then with your first job, Chicago, I think you said it was the right. the first job. You learned one set of of you know this is what this type of engineer does. How did you get from the what? How did you get from doing welding engineering to what you do now? Um, I guess a number of individual little steps that kind of took me to here. So, uh, 
So yeah, so um, I did start with a, a company called Chicago Bridge and Iron, that is a big uh, construction company, and I worked a lot on building really big things there. So they build a lot of tanks and refineries, oh. re uh, oil refineries, and and some other things, and so they use a lot of. Uh, equipment to put those things together and weld them together. They, I wouldn't really call those robots. They were a lot more manual in, in nature and required a person to set them up and, and do all those things. But, um, but all of that kind of starts lending itself to, to, uh, to robotics in that what started out as manual over time progresses to, to more robotic type implementations well fatima would like to know can you only build a robot out of iron or metal um no you could build it out of plastics um the the, the main part is is how you would make it move i think that'd be the challenge if you tried to build it just out of plastic would be how do you make it move and and uh, most robots need some sort of like electric motor or, or something like that to make them move. Well, we've got another one that just came in while you were talking. Laura and Stephanie wanted to know what materials does a robot need to be made out of in, in order to not deteriorate or rust in the ocean? Or rust in the ocean. Um, so with that, plastics would be good. Plastics can't rush, rust, sorry. Um, Stainless steels don't generally rust. So those are good choices when making choices around around corrosion problems. Um, but uh, that's that's all part of your design and where you're building something for. So what may be a problem in one environment nece isn't necessarily a problem in another. So that's again, you know, that comes back to your to the to the material selection and, and how what what you decide to build something out of aluminum again, you know, so sometimes you want things really light and not going to rust. So maybe you'll use aluminum. We have another question that came in wondering, Oh, Ms. Pizar's class, what's more difficult programming or building a robot? Uh, for me, programming, I am not a literate, uh, literate computer programmer. So I'm much more kind of hands-on. So the building piece would be easier for me, but that's why it takes a team to build a robot because what one person's good at, another person probably isn't or may not be as good at. So it takes a team to build a robot. And in fact, many of the groups that build real robots is it takes you know, 15, 20 people to build a robot. Wow. I love seeing teams come together like that because you truly do need every piece and you think, oh, I can't do this by myself. It's like, that's fine. We need that's somebody right. who is an expert in making the arm move this way or whatever it is. Um, right. What challenges do you face in designing robots for your job? Um, balancing people, keeping people safe with, um, with the technology we're trying to use. So, um, you know, a lot of the technology we're using is new to us. And so we have to gain a lot of confidence that it is able to, to do what we want it to do in an engineering perspective, but yet keep, but keep people safe and, and not have unintended consequences. And that's one thing that, you know, you, you kind of say, oh, we're keeping people safe. Like this is making sure that people go to work and that they can go home at the end of the day. That's because right. because these are, they can be potentially very, very dangerous machines to work around. So I just wanted to kind of point that out because um, we kind of might, might not think, oh, we're just trying to be safe. Oh, it tells you a machine's coming. These are huge. These that's are right. huge. These are two ton things coming at you. That's right. Um, we have a question from Remy. Hi, Remy. Um, we, it says, what's the favorite part of your job that you do currently? Do you travel? I do travel quite a bit. Uh, just uh, was visiting with some customers in Australia. 
telling them about what we've been working on. So, uh, so yeah, I've been just got back last week from from Perth, Australia, uh, and I'm headed to uh, to uh, Norway and and probably uh, uh, Milan, Italy, in in June for a, for a conference and to visit with some other people. And that's do you, are you going there to talk about uh, to talk to other people who do what you do? Are you going to introduce uh, new things to other people in the industry? Yeah, more to introduce new new th things that we've been working on to to others in the industry. Awesome. And then do you do you take that and say, hey, this is what we come up with. Here you go. You can have it for free. Or is it something that you're like selling? <laughs> Just wondering. Well, yeah. So Transocean doesn't really we, we're not um, we don't really uh, build a lot of this stuff. So it's really about discussions within our within our industry of how to keep people safer. All just idea sharing. That's pretty right. cool. Idea sharing, you know, same as same as I think we see with uh, with uh, driverless cars and and how to make those safer. Awesome. It's like a teacher conference. Right. Yeah. And a lot of teachers watching. Uh, CC would like to know where is your favorite place you've traveled for work and why? My favorite place I've traveled for work, uh, probably Chile. So I traveled a lot in Chile. I lived there for about a year um, and, and traveled over a good portion of the country. So I know it pretty well. And I've been back a few times for different things. Um, so yeah, probably Chile in general has been my favorite job, job travel. Oh, I've never been. It's on, it's on my list. There you go. It's a beautiful country. And so different, so vastly different from top to bottom. From Ooh. top to bottom, yep. I've been from uh, from the northern part of the desert, clear to the very tip in, in uh, Punta Arenas. Wow. So quite different from across the place. Absolutely. Isaiah wants to know, what is your favorite part and what is your least favorite part of your job? Uh, my favorite part is getting to go out and see what we've been working on, help, help people. Um, my least favorite part is, uh, is just trying to, to get it all to work at times because it can get a bit frustrating and you're trying to, to keep a project moving. But, but at the end of the day, that's why we go out and we get to see it working. So they balance each other. How long does it take to implement something new? Um, We've been working on this for about a year. So it'll take, it, we'll have worked on it for, for uh, about 15 months, 16, 15 or 16 months um, s since we first started. You know, that seems like a little bit of a long time, but really to implement something that's gonna be that helpful, that doesn't seem like that long at all. You're speedy. <laughs> Yeah, okay. um, yeah, uh, we 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 struggle with that ourselves, and and what uh, what is a, an appropriate time, and that's what you always have to kind of come back to is is we're we're gaining a lot of ground uh, for for something that's never really been done. Yeah, for real. Well done. We have a, a tech teacher wondering what should we encourage our students to study in order to pursue a career in robotics. Um. I think the way we're seeing a lot of, of uh, progression in technology is around uh, math and science still, from the basics up through and including, you know, beginning of, of computer programming and how, how, a, how a computer learns and how we can give it commands to do other things. So I think to me the the real the real challenge for a lot of this robotics and increased uh, you know autonomous vehicles and that will be will be programming. Okay, so programming, you were really into math. So I'm wondering how much of that do you use? I mean, because so much of it now is programming or having the idea for something and handing it off to be built, how much actual math do you, do you need to get through what you've done and then to do your current job? Sure. Um, so 
uh, in order to to really kind of know all the things you need. Oh, we've got a freeze happening. Is it a real freeze? Can you can you hear? Okay. All right. I don't know if I'm frozen or not, but if I'm not, just to catch you up, we are talking with Travis McGuire, who is a robot engineer at TransOcean. He's told us a lot about what he studied in college. To know, you end up needing quite a bit of math. Travis, I don't know if you can hear me, but we are we're having trouble. Uh, you've kind of cut in and cut out. I don't know if you're still there. Um, if you are, if you could refresh your feed, if you can hear me, uh, because we can't actually see and hear you. Um, and if you've dropped off, we'll see you when you when you come back on. I think this is a really interesting conversation because as we have talked about this season, we've talked to three engineers in a row and they've all happened to be engineers that have worked with robots. And not only have they worked with robots, they have gone to engineering school for three different types of engineering. And when they've come out, they have vastly different jobs. And the jobs that they have, they could have had a million other jobs. Because the fact that robots are being used in so many different fields, almost every field you can think of in some way is being, is being uh, robots are being utilized which is really, really neat. So if it's something that you're interested in, if it's something that you just think might be fun, there are so many different ways to get involved with it. And it seems like the main factor is, is on the job experience. You can get all of the fundamentals you need in college um, or on the job training. And then once you specialize in where you are, then you are able to you're, you're able to go in so many different directions. I just think that is just so incredibly cool. Oh, Hi, Travis. Back. Yeah, we're back. You made it back, oh good. Here, I'm gonna make you big again. All right, I was just talking about the fact that so much of engineering has to do with where you start and the type of job that you, that you uh, get at the beginning learning on the job and it mm -hmm. takes you to the next spot. But let's get back to you. You're the one who has the real knowledge here. Um, we have uh, Laura and Stephanie want to know, they're really interested in robots. What would you recommend for a young robot scientist to do in order to do the stuff you do? Um, I would say take an interest and start reading about different things you can do even at home to learn about robotics. Uh, a lot of the schools, especially here in Houston, have, have robotics clubs. And I know a lot of the science teachers out there, you know, have worked in, in you know, educational robotics. Um, there's some really cool, uh, and relatively inexpensive uh, development kits out there for beginning to learn about robotics. Uh, matter of fact, if you if you just go to Amazon Amazon these days and and type in home robotics kits, you you'd be surprised. You can find some really really cool things out there to start learning about robotics uh, for for as little as about 25 or $30. Well, this leads directly in because obviously you've been looking a little bit around on there. Adrian would like to know, have you ever made a toy bot for your kid? <laughs> uh, my son wants to, uh, he, at, at five, he, he, uh, I, I have a hard time getting him to concentrate that long, but, uh, but yeah, that's something he wants to build. So I've looked into what to do. And uh, for anybody who wants to, to get into it, there's lots of information out there, uh, whether it's through Lego. Lego has a, Lego itself has a really good uh, product out there for learning about robots and programming and, uh, and, and kind of gets you going down the, the robot that we think of out there that, that can walk and move and do things. And then, uh, and then also an, another 
kind of next level from that is is uh, what they call a Raspberry Pi uh, single board computer, and that helps you even more get into into robotics. Okay, that's where we need to go next. Uh, I have a five and seven year old, and there we've done go. we've done Lego Camp, um, where you've been introduced to that. I've never I've never heard of the what do you call it a Raspberry? A ras yeah, they're called a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Okay. Yeah. I will. I'll. I'll look that up. <laughs> Great. Well, um, we are. We are so excited to have you now. Is there anything that we're missing? Is there something that you would want students who are watching to know about what you do that we might have not thought to ask? Um. Not that I can think of offhand. I mean, we we really got into. Uh, all of, I think the different ways we can start thinking about how how these robot technologies are starting to to go to places we wouldn't have really thought of before, and with that become a lot of opportunities for kids to learn about them in 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 ways that uh, that maybe they hadn't previously. So again, I think anybody who's interested. You know, look look out for for like the robotics clubs or or anything like that. And there, there's always a a way to to go and learn. And they might be coming knocking on your door looking they for might. an internship. That's <laughs> you never know. We have time for one more question, and um, it's a it's a doozy. I don't know if you can handle it. Okay. Pancakes or waffles. Pancakes or waffles? Uh, waffles, because they hold more syrup. I'm going to give you one of these. You're sitting in a room full of waffle ladies. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all the time we have today. Unfortunately, that was our last question for today. Uh, Travis, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your story with us today. And thus concludes our last live event of this season. But fear not, you can still follow us online, Twitter, Facebook, and IG. Um, and you can still follow along with our Argonaut expeditions this summer. Uh, there are three of them going on. They're going to Arizona, the Bahamas, Costa Rica, via Jason. Uh, and um, you can look for us on yeah, all of those social medias are where you can keep up with all that. And also, the Jason National Ed Educators Conference is going to be held in... Where's it going to be held? I'm sorry. Leesburg, Virginia. In Leesburg, Virginia in July. And teachers, that's a great experience. If you'd like to join in on that, you can go for more details at jason.org. But all right, until we see you next, see you next time on Jason Live.